Okay, welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six speeches from either the traditional or Pathways program. So I wonder if the traditional, it doesn't exist anymore, so probably should drop that from my language. Or you must have substantial relevant presentation experience that you demonstrate in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by members of online presenters. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one. Right click and select rename to do so. Now we have members and oftentimes guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we are recording this meeting. Your video and audio contributions may be used for our club marketing purposes. Please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Please welcome our club president, distinguished Toastmaster Lewis Brown. Thank you, Lou. You're welcome, Lou. Everyone, everyone welcome to online presenters. As you may have just noticed, I also opened the meeting. I hit the gavel as the sergeant at arms. Our dear fellow Toastmaster friend and colleague, Roxanne Hossein, is unable to continue as our sergeant at arms and unable to really attend our weekly meetings due to some personal uh, challenges or personal situation that she has. Thus, I'd like to state right off the bat that if you would like to be our next club, or I should say our new club sergeant at arms, we will hold an election next week. Please let any of the officers know, and we will add you to the ballot. And of course, we'll also have folks running from the floor if you would like to. Before, oh, and folks, if you didn't know, I'm sure everyone here probably knows, this week is the International Convention. I don't know how many of you have signed up. I know I have, looking forward to attending many of those sessions that are taking place. And quite frankly, I got to download the agenda because there's just so much going on, hard to keep up. Before we roll with our traditional meeting, meaning my handing it over to our Toastmaster of the day, we have a very quick educational segment run by our Vice President of Education, Mr. Andrew Byrne. Please take it away, sir. Okay, thank you very much, President Liu. Uh, first thing we wanna do is recognize uh, our newest member, Dr. Karen Hall, PhD. Karen, you just introduce yourself and tell us 30 seconds about yourself. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna say thank you to everyone for accepting me. This is pretty awesome. And um, I've been in Toastmasters for a little bit. I started in Amsterdam, sorry, in London and then Amsterdam and now uh, in Naples. I've um, uh, worked, in, I've done some leadership roles as a VPE. Um, and in the last couple of years, I had a wonderful opportunity um, to be a, um, a district, a district um, uh, division uh, E, uh, leader and uh, as well evaluation contests etc cetera, etc cetera. but my primarily thing that I love about Toastmasters is the connection is you know being even just visiting this club um, so many people from different places in the world so rather exciting and I'm really really pleased to get to know you all so thank you. Okay want to let all the club members know that Karen is starting the walk towards our Smedley Award you need five new members over a period of August through the end of September. Of course, you're all looking at your pockets because David's made it very simple for you to uh, sign up for the next cycle or two if you want to sign up for those. And David would be happy to funnel your money through the mechanisms that we have for the club. If you have any questions on that, you can ask David. Secondly, I wanted to congratulate and recognize people in the club that have made contributions through what they've accomplished. And since July, we have had the following people accomplish a lot. 
Uh, Pamela Benjamin has done both innovative planning four and five, as well as strategic relationships four and five. Antoinette has completed Engaging Humor four, and on July 12th, Lucas completed Innovative Planning number five. And that takes us to what we've done educationally since July 1st. What we need to let everyone know is we need to get to our presidential distinguished by the end of the year, maybe even by December. And to do that, uh, we need to have 20 members, which should not be a problem unless some catastrophe happened. But we do need the points. And the points that we need comes from goal seven and eight, which is four new members and four new members. So you'll have to be busy in that area. But also we have a lot of advanced people and we need the beginning parts. We need people to need four people to finish level one, need two people to finish level two times two, and we need people to finish level three. If you are working on any of those projects, let me know so that the club can check those things off and work our way towards 10 points. Back to you, Lou, or Marianne. I'll let Marianne take it from here. Thank you, Andy. Well, good evening, fellow Toastmasters. At the onset of tonight's meeting, we're doing things a little bit differently because we're going to have a new member induction. And I am actually not able to share my screen. There's a technical glitch here. So um, I am going to talk this through. And uh, so fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, on behalf of Online Presenters Toastmasters, it is my duty and privilege to induct Dr. Kieran Hall, PhD, into our club. This is a really important occasion for both uh, Dr. Hall and for our club. As experienced speakers and Toastmasters, this individual will enrich us as we strive to enrich her in the spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Together, we expand our effectiveness as dynamic leaders, presenters, and communicators. Dr. Hall, please wait until I call on you to affirm your commitment to the Toastmaster promise. In the spirit, excuse me, in the presence of online fellow online presenters, do you pledge to attend meetings regularly and prepare for each assignment, to actively participate in club activities, to evaluate others in a positive, constructive manner to build open, friendly relations with our fellow members and to bring other new members into the club so they can gain the benefits of Toastmasters. Dr. Hall, can you please unmute and say, I do. I do. To the current members of Online Presenters, I remind you of your pledge to support Dr. Hall in her quest for self-development to provide her with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain a friendly, supportive atmosphere, and to make her online presenter's Toastmasters experience a rewarding and fulfilling experience. Congratulations, Dr. Hall, and welcome to Online Presenters. Can everyone please unmute and give her a big round of applause. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, let me just give me a minute to get my screen back the way it should be. All righty. So now we're going to begin the meeting, and we seem to have a lot of guests in the room tonight. So our meetings consist of three main parts. Tonight, we're gonna have two extra parts with that first one being uh, one of them. So the first one is our prepared speakers. And this is where people are speaking from particular projects and they've written a speech on a subject that they wanted to talk about. Next, we have table topics, which is our impromptu speaking. And this is where you're just talking off the top of your head. You'll have one to two minutes to answer a question from our Table Topics Master BDC. And then our gift of feedback, the evaluation portion of the meeting. This is where we learn a lot and not just the speakers, but everyone learns when the evaluators talk. So make sure you're paying attention. 
I will not be running this meeting all by myself. I have a lot of help. So I want to introduce each of our helpers and let them tell you just what they're going to be doing for us tonight. Uh, our timer, Andres Malenko, can you uh, unmute and let us know what you're up to tonight? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the evening. Uh, my name is Andres Malenko and I'm the timer and I will be timing exactly as it says right over there. My job is simple for prepared speeches, for table topics and for evaluators. Um, I just will be timing those speakers. For prepared speeches, uh, after five minutes, I will put the green light on, on my background. It means you can wrap up and finish speaking. After six minutes, you can see the yellow. It means time running out. You better hurry up. After you can see the red lights behind my background, it means you have 30 seconds to wrap up. Time is slightly different for table topics. One minute, green one minute 30 and then two minutes. For evaluators, again, time is slightly different as well. We have two minutes green, two minutes 30 yellow, and for three minutes red. So watch out and important bit, a bit of suggestion. You can pin me on the left hand, -hand side of your screen. So you will be seeing me all this time. Let's have a good night. Back to you, Madame Tosmas Teldini. Well, thank you, kind sir. And we're on to the next person. And David, you're doing several roles tonight. So can you tell us about all of them? I sure can. I will be the vote counter. That's probably the most important role. So when we call for a vote, send me a private chat message. So that means you click on the little chat box, you select my name, and you send that message just to me. I will also be the chat monitor. So those things kind of go together, watching whatever else might be going on in the chat that would be of interest. And I will make a report about that later. And next up, we have our newest member, Dr. Karen Hall. Tell us what you'll be doing as the grammarian. Oops. Yes, so my role is grammarian. So I will be looking at the use of language. As Toastmasters, we paint uh, vivid image in the minds uh, of our listeners uh, with the use of words. And so I will be paying attention to those words uh, with all the speakers and I'll share at the end. Well, thank you very much. Our next helper tonight is the watcher and that would be Rick Derling. Good evening, Marianne. And yes, I will be watching everybody. I'll be keeping an eye out for how well people are positioned in their screen, how well they're presenting in a video format and generally just keeping an eye out for things of that nature. Back to you, Marianne. Thank you, sir. Now, as I mentioned, we have a jam-packed meeting tonight, so we're gonna move quickly, keep the introduction short. Our first speaker this evening is Ms. Antoinette Trim, and she is working on the engaging humor path. She's at level five, demonstrating expertise, reflect on your path. Tonight, Antoinette's speech is through the looking glass. Please welcome Antoinette Trim. Good evening, Toastmaster of the Day, and a wonderful hello to all my other Toastmasters. From time to time, I do reflections on my life. Maybe I do on relationships, educational achievements, my work life, and even my finances. I do that on the basis that I want to improve in those areas. I managed to dig into my archives and I came up with some picks. This is me at age one. One of my favorite pictures is this one at age nine. That was when I was a brownie and you see me with a smiling face. 
another picture that that's brought back many memories for me is this one. I was a bridesmaid at one of my friend's wedding in my early 20s. And the dark, here am I as an adult. When I started Postmaster, especially to do presentations, I was very timid. As a matter of fact, in my icebreakers, about three of my icebreakers, I wrote down every single thing that I had to say. Just imagine about myself. Of course, my value just told me I should teach me notes. And I began doing sign posts. And that is where I started to develop on my presentation skills. Just as how in my picks, my various picks, I have increased in size vertically and horizontally. Similarly, I have increased in my present presentation skills. But funny enough, when I joined Toastmasters, I was thinking it's only about presenting. I did not know that we, in Toastmasters, there's also mentorship skills, there's also leadership skills, even marketing skills that one can develop. As a matter of fact, in my local club, I am a mentor to one of the Toastmasters. And from time to time, she would actually maybe write out a speech and she would tell me to evaluate it, see where she can improve. And I would do that. And she is very happy that I give her pointers on what to improve on, what can be left out. And so I encourage many of my friends and my colleagues to join Toastmasters. It will definitely help you to be brave, whether it's on the virtual platform or even face-to-face. -face. It also helps you to be very critical or do analytical thinking so much so that when I see presenters in our local TV shows, I always in my mind go through all the steps of evaluating features. And I do that most of the times. And of course, I will tell my friends what I think about how that particular center did. All in all, I would remain in Toastmasters as long as God gives me health and strength. Actually, I would like to be like one of our Toastmasters on this platform being 40 years or 30 odd years in Toastmasters. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Well, thank you, Antoinette. I always love hearing about people's journey. That was terrific. Our next speaker of the evening is Carolina Ramirez. Carolina will be speaking uh, from the Dynamic Leadership Level 1, Mastering Fundamentals, Researching, and Presenting. Today, Carolina's speech is called Streetwear. Please welcome Carolina Ramirez with her speech, Streetwear. Thank you very much, Marianne, for your introduction. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. 
there is a common factor that I really hate about attending weddings and working in an office for a big company, clothes. I have always loved to feel comfy. That's why I hate heels, no matter how pretty your legs look or how stylish it can be. I hate blouses and comfy jackets. Since I'm a kid, I love hoodies, sneakers, joyers, and that's not going to change no matter how old I am. Today, I want to share with you one of the deepest loves of my life, streetwear. And if you want to know more about streetwear, I leave you a link uh, with a study developed by PwC consultants on the chat. Streetwear's dictionary definition is simply enough, fashionable casual clothes. But that definition underplays what has become a multi-billion dollar retail phenomenon with the roots in countercultures of the 1980s and 1990s, including graffiti, hip hop, skate, and surf. In essence, streetwear involves the production, promotion, sale, and resale of casual fashion, mainly of sneakers, but also t-shirts and other items, often subverting the way the fashion industry has defined how cool is made profitable. Pioneers of the movement include James Jevia, founder of the skate brand Supreme. This is a very famous brand. And Sean Stasi, founder of surf brand Stasi. Designer Dapper Dan played an essential role in elevating streetwear to luxury in the early 1980s out of Harlem, New York, creating styles for hip hop artists who were rejected by traditional luxury brands at the time. While the movement has roots in California and New York, other early adopters like Hiroshi Fujiwara and Nigo, both influential DJs and designers, were responsible for pioneering the street style and a hip hop scene in Japan in the 1980s. Streetwear quickly rose simultaneously in other cities and regions throughout the globe. This popular culture shift appeared in the early 1960s when Andy Warhol questioned contemporary art. In the 1970s, artists such as Jean-Michel Basquiat and Keith Herring extended this conversation to street art, challenging traditional notions of who could access art and who it was for. Hip hop and rap similarly promoted a raw form of music motivated by rule breaking and unconventional art. This is why the streetwear consumers trust true creators. Surveys reveal that consumers consider musicians the most credible figures in streetwear, far above industry influencers. Streetwear creates an almost Streetwear creates a close and almost godlike relationship with its consumers and perfects the direct to consumer model that the traditional industry had been desperate to master. Many popular streetwear products can only be purchased directly from a brand through the drops model. Customers are rallied to, the, to be the first online or in a store to secure products that are released at a particular place and time. The drops model, which creates a scarcity and limited production to generate a high demand, has resulted in the birth of a booming secondhand market. And this is crazy because this resale market serves as a metric for a brand's success. The more valuable a product, the higher its resale price. Each streetwear brand's value is measured by several factors, including product quality, design, celebrity followers, musician and artists wearing the brand. But the most important factor is authenticity. What began as a niche culture, literally starting with the printing of logos on t-shirts, is now a primary driver in the fashion industry adopted by all genders and stretching from luxury to more brands. 
Streetwear is not a trend within fashion, but rather the fashion component of a larger cultural movement that spans fashion, art, and music. Mr. Toastmaster, back to you. Thank you so much, Carolina. Next, we're going to do something that is, again, a different way from our normal meeting. Uh, we're going to have a prospective member speech. And tonight, our guest, Kim Leeming, who has been with us several times before, I feel like she's part of the club already, she'll be delivering her three to five minute prospective member speech. Everyone, uh, please put your hands together for Kim Leeming as she delivers her prospective member speech. Thank you, um, VP membership. Sorry, I didn't get my timer started. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Vice president membership, Toastmasters, and fellow guests. My name is Kim Leeming. I'm here tonight to share my continuing journey to find the answer to Mark Twain's question. What is my purpose? What was I born to do? Picture it, Evanston, Illinois, 1985. There was a pre-med student at Northwestern University with a life plan to become an eye surgeon. That student was me. Life was going well. I was getting good grades as an electrical engineer slash pre-med major. I was confident I had chosen the right career path, that is, until I saw my eye doctor for a post-surgery eye surgery visit. When she asked me how things were going, I said, everything's great. You inspired me to follow in your footsteps. I'm now studying to become an eye surgeon just like you. Her response was unexpected. It literally changed my life path. You see, although both of my eyes work, they don't work at the same time. I can only see out of one eye or the other. I don't have any depth perception at all. My doctor said that with this condition, I could never be an eye surgeon. I was stunned. My plans hit a dead end. I had chosen engineering as my major only as a way to impress medical schools. It was never my ultimate goal. There I was, a college student at a crossroads looking for a new beginning. I decided to move back to California for a break from school in order to figure out my path in life. Picture it, Costa Mesa, California in 1985. I took a temporary job as a receptionist with every intention of returning to school full-time three months later. I began temping at a small company in the cable TV industry. I was soon offered a position in technical sales. This was the onset of my 30 plus year career in cable television. This is a point where my professional speaking experience began. My new role included in-person sales meetings, product demos, at cable TV systems and exhibiting at trade shows nationwide. It soon became apparent that becoming a better speaker would greatly benefit my career. But how would I do that? That's when I decided to join Toastmasters. Initially, my biggest takeaway from Toastmasters was that I didn't die when I gave a speech, but it became so much more. With my newfound confidence as a speaker, my job expanded to giving technical speeches for the Society of Cable Television Engineers nationwide. Fast forward eight years, picture it, Irvine, California, 1993. My then boss, Jim, and I left the company and started another business, Gemini Innovations. It's spelled like the sign, G-E-M-I-N-I, -I, but it actually stands for Jim and I. The name of our company became even more relevant later that year as Jim and I started dating. We are now married and celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary in March. In September, we'll be celebrating our 36th anniversary of working together. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys work together and you're married. It's truly frightening. Some people think this sounds like a plot for a horror movie, but it works for us. Also, I've had a love for magic ever since I can remember. I started performing magic when I was eight years old. I've practiced a lot ever since, and I've developed several comedy magic routines. Could this be my purpose? Was this what I was born to do? As if asking, answering Mark Twain's question wasn't hard enough, the pandemic hit and changed everything. It forced us to do all of our trade shows and customer meetings online. The pandemic has given me time to reflect and reignite yet another passion of mine, that is filmmaking. As our kids were growing up, I created many video projects through the different phases of their lives. I'm now a student of 3D animation as well. In fact, I'm on the verge of starting two YouTube channels, one channel will be about using humor to get through life, while the other will be about gluten-free cooking. Both channels 
will involve virtual filmmaking. This is a combination of 3D animations with live videos. They'll also include footage of me talking to a camera, something which is currently very challenging and horrifying for me. That is why I stand before you today. I feel joining online presenters would be a win-win scenario for both this club and for me. I think I'd bring a unique perspective in my speeches as well as my evaluations. I'm looking forward to both giving and receiving constructive feedback. Developing my online presentation skills is my next step toward answering Mark Twain's question. Now I'd like to pose the same question to you. Do you know what you were born to do? Back to you, Vice President Membership. Well, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Uh, Donna Knight, do we have quorum this evening? Yes, we do. Okay, so at this time, I will ask you to send a private message to our vote counter tonight, who is David Carr? That's correct. And, uh, and, and we should also get the timing and uh, uh, do a vote for the two, first two speakers. Uh, correct, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I believe Andre put it in the chat. So we have the speaker's time there. Uh, looks like they are both within time. And uh, so vote for your best speaker and vote for whether or not we want to admit Ms. Kim Leeming as a member of our club. And while you're doing that, I'm going to move along and let you know that the next part of our meeting is where we practice our impromptu speaking skills. Have you ever been in that moment where you walked away from a conversation and said, oh, I should have said that. Well, this helps us get better at this so that we can answer off the top of our head and it's table topics. So BDC is gonna ask a question and you'll have one to two minutes to respond. At this time, I would like to surrender the floor to Mr. BDC, Mr. Crawford. Thank uh, you so much. Oh. Let's see what you got for us tonight. Okay. Uh, one, I took your theme of new beginnings and I thought to myself, what could be more fun than answering a bunch of questions about how would you redeem yourself? How would you have a new beginning? So I went to, I Googled, what were some of the biggest business mistakes companies have ever made and just said, all right, let's go over these situations and ask you, what would you do to get a new beginning if you're the company who made this mistake? So we're going to start off with this wonderful decision. Excite could have bought Google for less than $1 million, and they didn't. And instead, well, we all have heard of Google, and no one knows anything about Excite anymore. Tasha, could you please unmute and tell us what would you do to give Excite a new beginning? Uh, I have heard a lot of stories about companies that have dropped the ball. Excite, I feel, would need to burn the entire company. How could you fail to recognize the power that Google had? The name alone would let you know that the company was going to be a surefire company. So to dismiss Google was absolutely tragic. And because of that, the company needed to burn. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. We're going to move on to our second disastrous business decision. And we're going to be talking about Daimler-Benz losing $20 billion on Chrysler. Did you know that they bought Chrysler at $30 billion in 1998? and then sold them in 2007 for $20 billion less. What would you do, Jeanette, to redeem Daimler-Benz after the fiasco that was them deciding to buy Chrysler? Well, I don't know too much about cars. Well, I had, I had several cars in my life so far, but uh, you know, like uh, I, I truly think that it's a, it's a very bad decision if you you know you you know you you own you own something and then you sell it for a lot less than what it's worth, and uh, what I would do with Chrysler, well I would tell Chrysler well the 
I would tell Chrysler probably to um, to get new new cars, to get new cars, and we start again and we sell and we sell the company for a lot more money. That's what that's what I would tell them. Start over again. So that's my uh, comment for uh, for Chrysler. So uh, you know, it's a very bad decision. I mean, if I mean, you know, when you're a business person, you definitely want to make a profit. And when you're below the profit margin that you're supposed to have, obviously you fail somewhere. And uh, and I, that's what I would tell Chrysler: start over again, get new cars, and get new models of cars, and try to do more publicity and get uh, the customers interested in what they're doing. And probably they will be able to uh, to have a better follow up followers that will you know, encourage them that would, you know, give, bring value to their product so that they could, they would be able to sell it for a better price. So uh, back to you. Thank you for the uh, table topics. Back to you, Mr. Topics Master. Thank you so much for that wonderful explanation of what you would do. Our next company that made a terrible, terrible decision is Kodak. We all know them for film, but did you know that they had the first digital camera in 1977? I'm old, but I'm not even as old as that digital camera. So what did they do wrong? How would you redeem Kodak Angela? How would you bring them back to prominence in our photography landscape once again? Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Kodak, seriously, I would take the president of Kodak out back and spank his behind because clearly he was not listening to his market. Clearly he was not listening to the engineers. Clearly he was living in yesterday instead of tomorrow. So I would have to spank his bottom and send him back home to his mom and hopefully she can help him to be more forward thinking. So Kodak missed out on a prime opportunity and they almost became extinct because they had a leader who was not forward thinking. I don't really know seriously what we could do for Kodak because it's, it's almost impossible, well, it actually is impossible without a time machine to go back in time and change something. So I think what they can do going forward is to be more open-minded and to have a perspective of the future that really is around innovation. And looking at now, what are people really wanting to do with this whole photography um, area? And look to see if there is something new that they could do to redeem themselves, because clearly, Kodak made a big mistake. So after I spank the uh, president, I'd give him another chance and ask him, please, please, please listen to your staff. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Angela. I think I got time for two more. So Andre, if you want to tell me if I don't have time for two more, please let me know in the chat. That'd be greatly appreciated. We're going to move on to the fourth blunder here. News Corp bought MySpace for $580 million in 2005. Six years later, they dumped it for $35 million. Lucas, you want to tell us what you're going to do to help redeem MySpace? Sure, I'd be more than happy to tell you as I continue reading the information that you have so kindly provided. But what I'm going to start with and what I think the, the blunder is, is that it was a bit uh, premature, I guess you could say, that they managed MySpace very poorly. And that they really failed to optimize something that was changing at a very rapid pace, something like social media. At the time, at least in MySpace, was pretty much entirely new. 
to everyone. It was a brand new way of connecting with others, whereas before there was instant messenger and other kinds of communication tools. But now with MySpace, I think it would be a little bit short-sighted for a company to see a social media platform and expect that that would be the standard for years and years to come. So with that in mind, I think that they had to continue pushing the envelope with MySpace and being innovative. And who knows, maybe it would have worked and maybe it wouldn't and MySpace kind of fading out of popularity would have been inevitable no matter what. But I think that's something that I would have at least asked about or introduced to News Corp when it came to MySpace to continue to innovate, continue to expand what MySpace is about. But it, in the end, I'm not entirely sure that I even, even hitting the target as far as what the blunder is, because I, I still haven't quite read it. But anyway, back to you. No problem. Marianne, was that my last one or I have one more after this? Uh, that was your last one. Bummer. Right back to you, Marianne. Well, thank you so much for a unique and entertaining table topics, Brian. All right, and now we are at the feedback portion of our meeting. Please allow Should we, me. Should uh, we get timer's report for the table topics? Oh, perhaps? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yep. I've just posted some reports. Uh, looks like uh, um, speaker two, three, and four qualified. Dr. Tosha, I think she spoke less than one minute. So it's uh, someone else's executive decision. Yeah, typically we try and get people to speak for a minute at least. So, but for two, three, or four on his list. And send your votes to David in the private chat. Um, we're at the feedback portion of our meeting where we will hear from Graham Cairns as our general evaluator, and he will be leading this portion of the meeting. So I will turn over the virtual lectern to him. Welcome, Graham. Thank you, Thank you Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests. We've had a couple of great speeches tonight, but of course, as is the key to the Toastmasters experience, they need to be evaluated. We need to give feedback. There is simply no point in us sitting here and presenting if we don't get feedback. And so I'm going to call on our evaluators now. The first evaluator, or at least the evaluator of the first speech, uh, is Laura. Laura, can you, for a time of two to three minutes, please present your evaluation of speech one this evening, which was, of course, by uh, Antoinette Trim. So, Laura, all yours, two to three minutes. Thank you, General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and especially thank you, Toastmaster Antoinette Trim, for that enjoyable speech. I feel like I got a peek into your life. I'm gonna start off with the first, the strengths that I noticed, as well as some opportunities for improvement. First off, there you have a very conversational smile. Sorry, you're conversational and you have a wonderful warm smile. You're engaging and excellent eye contact in that you look directly at the, at the camera. It looks like you're speaking to me. It's very intimate. I also enjoyed the hand gestures as well. Now, some opportunities for improvement. I noticed that there was a, a baseline of a tempo and there were opportunities to vary that tempo where appropriate. For example, when you, when you said that you grew vertically as well as horizontally, you could have maybe raised that pitch up and maybe have, have a bit of a wink. You could even say um, taller and wider in that way. Another one was the structure. I, I know that the logic was young child, bridesmaid, and then your Toastmaster's life. I would have liked to have seen a nice wrap up in the conclusion, kind of tying those all together with, with, the, with a thread. 
And uh, in summary, I just remember to punch up some of the points uh, in or vary the tempo. Remember to uh, wrap up for the benefit of the audience, but please, please keep up the, the warm smile, the engagement, in, engaging uh, conversational tone that you have. Um, and thank you for letting us into your uh, Zoom world. Mr. General thank Evaluator. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for that evaluation. Moving on to our second formal evaluation, and that is by Jim Barber. Jim is providing an evaluation of speech two by uh, Carolina Ramirez. So Jim, again, for a time of two to three minutes, your evaluation, please. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. My fellow Toastmasters, our most welcome guests, and especially Toastmaster Carolina Ramirez. Ooh. This was, as Graham just indicated, presentation number two from the research and presenting from the dynamic leadership path. Carolina, you indicated in your introduction that you wanted to share with us your one of the loves of your life, which was streetwear. In talking with you beforehand, you indicated that you wanted to, you didn't have anything in particular, you just wanted to make sure that people understood what you were saying. You wanted to see if you had any grammar problems and that sort of thing. Congratulations, you achieved both of your objectives. Your enthusiasm for streetwear came through. I don't think anybody could possibly miss that. And as far as your presentation went, let's see, your pronunciation, your diction, your pacing, all top notch, your use of the pause, wonderful, I like that. Your gestures, they were effective, they were congruent with what you were saying, that was great. Basically, I have no suggestions in, at all involving your presentation or your content. I do have a presentation, however, uh, actually two ways of, of resolving it. Let's see if I can pull that up here. This is what we saw. Now, this little thing over here, let's see if I can uh, draw something. It's not coming out. But anyway, over on the right there, you, the little tiny square, that's you. So we're getting a great picture of your slides and your slides were very good. But unfortunately, the part of it that's really most important, the star of the whole thing is in this little tiny square over on the right. Now, this isn't your fault. This is Zoom's fault. This is the way Zoom's screen sharing works. But I would encourage you to find some way of doing this instead, so that you are occupying a bigger part of the frame, so that we can see you, because you're the star of the presentation, and we want to see who's giving the presentation. There are two ways, as I say, to accomplish this. One of them is to get a little bit closer to the camera. You were awful far back, and so we really couldn't see you that well anyway. If you would get closer to the camera, and occupy more of the frame, that would help. But the other thing, and this is just something you're going to have to find some way of playing with, there's a variety of ways of doing it. Find some way, if you can, to incorporate your image into the overall picture so that at least you are sharing the picture with the, fr with the, the frame with the slides rather than having the slides dominate. Because this was a terrific presentation. Unfortunately, as I say, it was slide heavy, and I would like to see more of Carolina Ramirez. So that's my only suggestion. Looking forward to what you're going to be doing in the next one. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Jim. Uh, although we can't see you, we can still only see your slides, by the way. Oh, sorry about um, that. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, and can I get the uh, timing report for are. the two evaluations, please? Uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. Have they gone up? Yes, they have. Thank you, Andre. So uh, both uh, Laura and Jim are eligible for Best Evaluator. So please feel free to send your Best Evaluator vote to our All Singing, All Dancing. He is amazing, but he's doing it all tonight. Uh, David Carr, Vote Counter Chat Monitor uh, and um, Chief Cook and Bottle Wash. Time now for me to move on to some of the other things. The grammarian, for example. Um, I'll get to the grammarian in a minute because the grammarian might well be able to make some observations from the reports given by other people, uh, given that this is only the onset of that section. So I'll call for, instead, the watchers' report. 
So that's you, Rick. All yours. One minute, if you would. Thank you. Uh, my report as a watcher tonight, I've been watching everybody, and that kind of distracted me a little bit. There's two remarks I'd like to make as suggestions. The first one is watch your backgrounds with regards to how you're lit and how your face is presented against that background. There are a couple of people, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to one of them privately, who are just washing out a little bit because of the background and the lighting. The other thing that I would urge people to do is be careful with looking at other things while you are in the process of, you just want to go and take and look at something. You might want to mute your camera so that we're not seeing you not paying attention to the speaker. That's something that I think is important. If you have to do something, just mute. That way we can't see that you're really not giving the speaker your attention. Aside from that, a lot of good backgrounds and back to you. Thank you, Mr. Watcher. Now, I, I note that our art counter was originally down to be Pamela, but I'm not sure who ended up replacing Pamela as the art counter. Can I get a show of hands? Who did that? David. David. Oh, that's the all singing, all dancing, but it's not listed on there. So, David, uh, as art counter. Uh, uh, I, um, no, I, I, I did not count Oz. So, all right, if enough. you're counting on me to count Oz, the Oz were not counted. <laughs> No problems. Actually, let me talk about the R counter, if I can, just for a moment, because I've got a few moments to do this. I've actually done a blog post on this. Does anybody think the R counter serves a useful function in a Toastmasters club? Show of hands, those who think it's a really good role. Show of those hands, who, those who think, no, this is, I really hate the R counter, don't think it does anything. Yeah. Funny thing is, the R counter only works if we're actually getting direct and instant feedback. Now, obviously, it's rude to go ding, ding, ding in a meeting like this. It just simply doesn't work. But you might, for example, at the end of, if you're an R counter, send reports immediately to somebody after they've done it. Simply waiting to the end of the meeting apparently doesn't achieve a great deal. But anyway, we don't have an R counter, so we'll move on to the chat monitor. David, anything you want to observe in the chat? Well, let's see. Actually, I wanted to mention that this guy, uh, Graham Cairns, uh, brought up the Kodak story immediately before it came up as a, as a table topic. So uh, famous flameouts in history. We had a lot of notes. Uh, ah, hey, free one. Uh, a lot of notes uh, welcoming uh, guests and Dr. Hall, our new member. And also, uh, Carolina shared the research link if you would like to see what PwC said about streetwear. That's all Thank I have. You. Thank you, David. The uh, interesting thing about the use of chat in a club like this is that it does give us a chance to actually provide instant feedback to our speakers as well, if you have done so. I don't know whether you have, but feel free to do that. You can either either offer direct feedback to them via chat or you can put it into the open chat if you think you've got something that's worth observing now who else do i need to call upon i need to call upon now the grammarian uh, kieran to see who has used our word of the day which was onset uh, or has slaughtered the language or <laughs> made it let it rise its spirits unrehearsed whatever kieran okay, okay well i, I think <laughs> grammarian well i think i put my foot in my mouth because i actually thought it was a new beginning so that's what I was looking for but <laughs> but I've gotten uh, a couple of uh, comments from Grammar and I'll uh, start with the speakers I'll start with Carolina first um, Carolina did a lot of layering like subversion of culture counterculture shift cult-like culture movement so a lot of layering of language to drill it down I thought that worked really nicely Antoinette she talked about her, she started first with a wonderful hello. I, I, that brought a smile in terms of the use of those words together. And the vertical horizontal, that kind of visual image, I thought worked very well. Uh, Kim also, this crossroads looking for a new beginning and a reigniting of passion. I thought the pulling of those words as well, a really nice image um, created. Lara, she talked about a conversational smile. I wasn't sure if that was an error or something, but that worked really, really nicely. And then there was a lot more, but I won't <laughs> take a lot of time. Great use of language today, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kieran, for that. 
All right, so my evaluation now of the meeting and of the evaluators, for example. First up, let me say that the induction I thought was handled really nicely. Even though Marianne had some difficulties with the sharing of the screen, it didn't matter. We didn't need the screen. I thought it was done well. The only observation I would make is that uh, Marianne pointed out, she said, okay, members, I'm going to ask something of you that you agree to this and then didn't actually give us a chance to agree to it until afterwards. So if you're going to use the induction the way that it is written, then you have to call on us to open our microphone to say, I agree. Or you say, members, you have agreed to do this. Now let's give her applause. So, you know, take the option away. Just, it was just a, a, a little messy there, but I really like the induction. I love inductions and, and I love to see that. Now, thank you, Jim Barber, for telling us what the purpose of Carolina's speech was, because we didn't get that in the introduction. Now, all we knew from the agenda was that this was a level one speech. It might have been the first of two evaluation speeches, or it might have been as it was the research and present. So thank you, Jim, for drawing it to our attention. As Toastmaster, let your audience know what the project objectives are. On the subject, by the way, of the uh, research and present, don't know whether everybody has seen, but the research and present is being abandoned from level one and will be shifted to a, uh, an elective in level three from any new paths going forward. Just let you know that that's happening. There's a couple of new additions going into level one, body language and speech construction, but you'll hear the details later. Kim did something really good in her speech tonight where she was asking to become a member. She ran her own timing and we know that she ran her own timing because she said hang on a moment I forgot to start my timing really good that you were doing that Kim well done and I gotta say I loved that Mark Twain quote it's not a quote that I had heard but it fitted this presentation beautifully and it rounded the presentation out beginning and end so well done Kim and I'm really looking forward to um and seeing the result of the vote uh, on your membership. But I think I've got a pretty fair indication how it's going to go. Great topics tonight, by the way. Thank you very much, BDC. Can I make a suggestion? If you're going to have a slide which has information on it, only use the headline because I was in gallery view. I'm always in gallery view because I want to see how the rest of the members are observing this and so that I can see the timer. I couldn't read any of that other than the headline. So if you're going to use slides, just go with the headline or a picture. But as I say, great topics. The evaluators, Laura, positive, great commendations and some good specific recommendations. For example, using vertical and horizontal and saying, raise the voice with vertical. And yeah, that was really well done. However, there's an elephant in the room that was not addressed. This speech, the reflect on your path is supposed to be 10 to 12 minutes. Now, obviously, the decision was made by Antoinette to only make it a five to seven minute speech and she fitted within that five to seven minutes. But there's a reason why this is supposed to be a 10 to 12 minute speech. It is a comprehensive look at the entire path. And to shorten it the way that it was, I don't believe does this project justice. So I draw that to the attention of the club. We could have had the full 10 to 12 minutes tonight because we only had the two speeches. Jim, again, warm and empathetic as an evaluator, really good to observe that slide issue, although as I pointed out, you might have gone back to yourself at the end of that slide, uh, because we couldn't see you, which was, as you say, you're the star of the role. One other thing that I would suggest for Jim, he made some suggestions about you might need to look at ways to do this, put specific suggestions into the chat so that we can all go and look later on how we can do that. Always look to value add. But having said that, a couple of great evaluations. I had a really good meeting tonight. I now have to ask for the vote for the best speaker, the best evaluator, and the best table topic. So uh, all singing, all dancing, uh, El Presidente of um, Charter. Can you please give us those details? I can. So working backwards, evaluator, Jim Barber perennial favorite, though he had some competition. For table topics, Lucas. And for 
the speaker of the evening, Carolina. Thank you, David. And I think that's everybody. I don't think I've missed anybody. We are now actually running a few minutes ahead of time. So again, general observation as general evaluator, love the meeting, love the fact that we're all willing to step up and take on these roles. Just keep it happening, folks. Just keep it happening. Now, uh, is there anybody else I need to hand it to? In that case, do you want it back, Marianne, or will I give it straight to the president? Yes, Marianne, Toastmaster of the day. It's all yours. Well, thank you kindly, Graham. Wonderful general evaluation. I love that you had a little extra time in there. Now, our theme tonight is new beginnings, and uh, Dr. Hall is beginning with us tonight, but guess what? Graham, I'm glad you like inductions because looks like we're gonna be scheduling another one soon because Kim was voted unanimously to join our club. So Kim, we'll be, I'll be in touch with you about scheduling that in the future. Now, I would like to hand it back to President Lou Brown. Thank you, Marianne, Toastmaster of the Day. Let's give Marianne a big round of applause. She did a fabulous job. And, you know, everyone at the meeting tonight, I mean, it's a testament to our professionalism, our sticking to timing with the agenda and so forth. I mean, it's really a professional club. I know I enjoy it every single week. You know, and it's not just educational, it's entertaining and fun. So really good blend of things. I mentioned at the beginning, just another reminder that next week we will have a special election for our sergeant at arms position. Again, please send me a email, an email, if you are interested in that position. I will put my email address in the chat. Does anyone else, any of our other officers or even members have any announcements to make? Please raise your hand if so. Mr. Byrne. I just wanted to point out that we normally have a round with our guests before we leave and then do not leave. We'll end on time, but if we have not taken the names for the people taking the roles for next week, please stick around for a few extra minutes after we close. Yeah, jump in the gun again, Mr. Byrne. I already had that on my agenda. Thank you, sir. Good reminder. He can read my mind. He's always, he knows what's in my mind here. This is great. Okay, our guests, we're going to ask you to share a little bit about yourself. I believe, again, for some of you, because you may not uh, introduce yourself to all of the members of our club. Some of you, I know, joined during the meeting. So we'd love to hear from you. And we'd like to hear what your takeaway is from our meeting tonight. What did you gain from this meeting? Let's start with Mr. Dominic. Cupidon, Cupidon, please correct me on your last name. Cupidon. Cupidon, very good. It was a it was a wonderful meeting. I was invited here by Toastmaster Knight. It's my first time here, and I'm coming from a different club, so it was interesting to see how things are not only similar but different and you guys have your own unique take on things that I felt was exciting and would may possibly want to see in my club. But very well done. Overall, very well done. Thank you, sir. And where are you located and what is the name of your home club or clubs? So right now I'm in Vancouver, Canada, but my club is Sajakor Life Toastmasters Jamaica. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Dominic. And hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Thank you for being here. To uh, let's see, Andre Tomlinson, I believe you are a Toastmaster, sir, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. Good evening, everyone. I'm a Toastmaster at uh, Toastmasters uh, 502 Park Lawn Toastmasters in Division F, District 36, uh, Region 7. At the onset of my uh, Toastmasters career back in 2007, I went to go check this out because a friend of mine told me about Toastmasters and was heavily impacted the first time that I attended a Toastmasters meeting back in Tampa in 2007. And I thought I was going to join, but a couple of years passed. And as I started to work in, a, in my career and started to move in my career trajectory, had a family, 
and started to engage other individuals who are wonderful orators and started to see how critical communication is, I was like, I got to get back on this again. So I rejoined to Toastmasters about five years ago, have been part of this Park Lawn 502 Club since then. And because of my schedules and change and just adjustments in life, I, I needed to find another club that meets during a time that I'm available. So that's why I'm here. And that's why you've probably seen me maybe two or three times as a familiar face. And I look forward to joining. I sent uh, Marianne Toastmaster other day uh, an email or a or message just inquiring about how can I join. So I've, I've participated for several years. I've been in competitions. And I believe, very similar to you, Kim, that each of us have been given a purpose. And, and for me, I believe that one of the purposes is a voice for this generation. And this platform is going to give me an opportunity to sharpen, develop skills, learn how to uh, tell stories from the Toastmaster extraordinaire over there. I love his story that he shared uh, two, uh, two Mondays ago. So I just look forward to just learning and sharpening and developing. And hopefully I can just bring more, uh, bring add more value to your, your club and organization. So thank you for the opportunity for me to talk this evening. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. It seems our vice president membership is going to be very busy. <laughs> Looks like we may have to schedule a new member induction every week for new member vote and then new member induction. So thank you again, Andre, for being here. It's nice to see you. Let's see, Lillian Monari, please introduce yourself again and share with us what you have gained from our meeting today. Thank you, Mr. President, fellow Toastmasters. Um, like I said in the beginning, I've been in Toastmasters for about three years at Bright Monday Toastmasters. We were kind of struggling to transition to the online meeting since last year when COVID hit. And that's when I started uh, looking around for clubs that meet online and just to learn how you conduct your meetings. And I ran into this club and I've been learning a lot every time I come and visit. Uh, today specifically, I really enjoyed um, the speeches, of course, uh, well-prepared speeches. Uh, I can definitely tell it's an advanced club. I enjoyed the evaluations. They are very, um, constructive and practical tips that I could definitely use in my presentations going forward. So I'm learning a lot about how to give uh, evaluations and feedback. That's what I learned today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our newest member, Kim Leeming. I know you shared a lot in your speech. Anything additional you'd like to share with us? I want to thank Graham for his evaluation because I was feeling bad the entire time about the timer because I tend to say things out loud when I make a mistake. I just announce it to everyone. And so I was feeling really bad about it. So thank you for turning a negative into a positive, Graham. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you very much. One of my favorite types of feedback or pieces of feedback is when we say, I pretty sure I used to say it in the past is thank you at the end of the speech. And I always get the feedback. You shouldn't be thanking us. We should be thanking you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I guess my thing is thank you for listening. <laughs> at, least it's, at least an entertaining speech if all eyes are on us, right? Okay. Thank you everyone for attending our meeting. I will do the Andre official. Reed, still a guest? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss somebody? Hi, good evening. Oh, so sorry, Andrea Reed. How are no. you, ma'am? I am fine. I was invited by Toastmaster Dono. I'm from Jamaica and I'm from the Sajikor Life um, Toastmasters group. I This is my second time attending and I found the meeting to be very smooth. Whatever it is that you do in the meeting, it can actually be simulated outside, you know, just how it is run and organized. So I really like it. So thank you. Thank you very much. I will do a quick scan to make sure no one else I've missed. Grant, feel free to chime in again. <laughs> so very good. Okay, everyone, thank you again for being here. I'm going to do the official gavel smash and say this meeting is now adjourned.